Hello everyone and welcome back to Navis Nobolite. I am Captain Zelnik and today we are continuing our Battlefleet Gothic tutorial videos, moving on to the basics of movement and the bearing compass. Movement in Battlefleet Gothic attempts to represent just how massive these ships are. And in that regard, because they have so much inertia moving through empty space, attempting to make drastic and dramatic m maneuvers without specific organized efforts from the crew will cause effectively these ships to either fly to pieces or to smash themselves into a tiny ball of wreckage. Now, this is represented in the game in certain ways. Now, the most obvious way is that when it comes to your maximum and minimum movement, as established in your speed stat, you need to recognize that your maximum movement is established here but your minimum movement which is very much a thing is half of this total number so in the case of this gothic class cruiser your minimum speed is 10 centimeters and your maximum speed is 20. now this is universal across about 99 percent of the ships in the game of course the eldar are accepted of this rule because they're eldar and they don't care about the rules but everything else in this game follows this basic movement rule. You must move, if you can, half your total movement. Also, if for whatever reason, be it through damage to the ship, critical damage to the engines, outside stellar phenomena, dark Eldar leech torpedoes, for whatever reason, if your ship moves less than five centimeters, okay, less than five centimeters, in a round, it counts as a defense on the gunnery table. Also, even if your ship is crippled, or for whatever reason, your minimum speed is, your maximum speed, I'm sorry, is reduced, you still must attempt to move your minimum speed of the standard speed, not the speed that you have after it is affected by negative effects. So if this ship is crippled, and its speed is reduced to 15 centimeters, you still must attempt to move 10 centimeters. This is a, ma a major effect on the maneuverability elements of vessels in this game, because the faster your ship is, the longer it must go before it can finally stop moving in a round. So a Carnage-class cruiser in the Chaos Fleet has to go at least 12 and a half centimeters every time it moves. The Slaughter class cruiser in Chaos has to go 15. These sorts of things you have to remember when you are moving because it is very easy to overshoot your opponent. But it's also really nice to have a faster possible speed to get the hell out of dodge when you are being shot at. So, now in regards to moving and turning, like all cruiser class vessels, you have to go 10 centimeters minimum in order to turn. What do we mean by turning? Well, in the stat line of your ship, it has a turn rate, uh, degree. Typically, it's between 45 and 90. Now, what is the way you measure that? Well, thankfully, the bearing compass, which is provided to you pretty much everywhere if you want to play this game, it is one of the most important tokens you can possibly have because it provides you an easy reference for turning. As you can see here, you have an arrow that leads straight ahead that basically gives you the direction of reference on the ship. The cross here is where you're supposed to focus the uh, intending ship over its stem, and you have these bars. Now, an easy way to identify a 45 degree turn is going from the arrow to the bar. That is exactly 45 degrees, okay? Now, to go a 90 degree turn, thankfully, it's simply going from the bar to the bar. So if it is a vessel that has a 90 degree turn, you can establish your bearing compass instead of the, on the arrow, have it established on the bar, and simply move from one bar to the next on either side. Very rarely you'll have a ship that has like a 180 degree turn, where it's simply a matter of turning it all the way around. 
A vessel with a 180 degree turn effectively can come to any heading that it wants to because you can go 180 degrees to the left and 180 degrees to the right. There are very few ships like this in the game, but they do exist. Now, when, in regards to the bearing compass, it also has the ability of teaching you about what facing you are on. Thankfully, here in Vassal, it actually has the base over the ship, but it's handy to have the actual bearing compass next to you as well. When, the enem when you are trying to determine an enemy and where the enemy is in relation to you, if they are in these red zones, if the bearing compass is o properly over your ship, they are in your front sorry your left or right arc if it is in the white zones it is in the front or rear arc now we're going to go into arcs and into bearing and to the gunnery table in the next upcoming videos to further describe this but if you're trying to identify if you can fire at an enemy and with a given set of weapons that fire out of a certain arc the bearing compass is how you do it if you have port and starboard weapons the red zones are what you're trying to establish if an enemy ship is within those zones. So, to give you an example, if an enemy, if I can get this thing to properly work, if an enemy is within these zones, okay, within this arc, that huge arc, okay, you can fire with your port or starboard weapons. Same with the other side. Remember, port goes out to the left, starboard goes out to the right. All right, that's all for this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all again in the next video.